that chains will be broken, that the anointing will rest in this place, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen.
share some announcements with you. Can you give her a hand clap of praise? Good evening, good afternoon, Kingdom Well. Good afternoon. All right, so I want to give you some announcements so you can stay connected in the form of what we have coming up. All right, so we have our well groups that are in full effect. We have our well groups that are in full effect. We have Women of the Well that will take place on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. If you are interested in coming to our Women of the Well groups, please see me, um, Dr. Donna, to get plugged in and for location details. So well groups are one of the ways in which we live out the vision of belonging and developing family. So we want to make sure that you get involved. We also have the men's group that are on Mondays. Yes, Mondays at 7 p.m., okay? So, again, we want to make sure that you are getting involved in helping us bring forth the vision of belonging. Monday, April 22nd, at noon, we will have our monthly prayer with Pastor B. So make sure that you tune in on Facebook and Instagram, as well as our YouTube channel. Just a reminder that we will not have service next Sunday. It's fourth Sunday. So here at Kingdom Well, four Sundays are our family and community day. It is our chance to get to spend time with our family or go visit a friend church that has been asking you to come or we can even serve in the community. We want to make sure that you stay connected with us. So take out your phones. We want you to text the word LINK, L-I-N-K, to 225-659-9355. Again, it is 225-659-9355. Well, and you will text the word link. We want to make sure that you follow us on all our social media outlets. We have our Kingdom Well Church on Facebook. We also have our YouTube channel, Kingdom Well Church, and then our Instagram, Kingdom Well Church. Do we have any first time visitors with us? that we will hand you. Please fill it out and put it in our offering basket and we will also grant, uh, give you a first time visitor's gift. So now we want y'all to stand up. This is an exercise for everybody. So we want y'all to stand up and we want y'all to leave out of your row and go hug somebody that you did not come to church with. Hug somebody that you did not come to church with and also make sure that you get a selfie. <laughs> Amen. Somebody say offering time. Say offering time. This is one of the best times we have an opportunity to give back to God and give back to His church. <clears throat> Here at the Well of Kingdom Well, we have four ways that you can give. You can give in person by envelope. If you need an envelope, just slip your hand up. You can also give by givelify.com, or if you have the app, you can go to the app and search for Kingdom Well Church. You also can give via Zelle at kingdomwellbr at gmail.com. That's kingdomwellbr at gmail.com. <clears throat> you can also give via Cash App. That's dollar sign kingdomwellbr. So you can give in person. You can give by givelify.com. You can give by Zelle, kingdomwellbr at gmail.com. Or Cash App, dollar sign kingdomwellbr. Here at Kingdom Well. We don't want you just to give to the give, but we want to teach you and educate you and give you principle on giving. So I want to share a scripture with you. It's coming from the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 4. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation version. It says, farmers, it's just one verse, farmers who wait for perfect weather never plant. If they watch every cloud, they never 
Farmers who wait for perfect weather never plant. If they watch every cloud, they never harvest. So farmers are the ones that plant seeds that grow, right? And it, and it provides a return. And it says in the scripture that if you're waiting until the perfect time, the perfect weather to give, you'll never have the ability to reap the harvest. So you can't just wait on the, either at the extra income to come, the money laying around, the big check to arrive for you to sow, but you have to get to a point where you can give freely instead of just sitting back watching the clouds, as the scriptures say, so that you can reap a harvest. And so there, if you're sitting there watching the clouds, you're not doing any action, you're not putting any action behind it, but you have to put words to your seed. That's like giving water to your seed. You have to put words to your seed and direct that seed where you want it to go so that you can reap the harvest that you desire because we want a harvest. We don't just want a return because a return could just be one crop. But when you say harvest, you're talking about an abundance of crops and an abundance of return on what you have sown. So what better time it is than to sow into this good ground here at Kingdom Love Church. So as, there, as you're getting ready to give, I want you to take your time and ask God, what is it that you desire for me to give? Don't just give just to give, but talk to God and say, God, do you want me to give a dollar? God, do you want me to give 200? Whatever it is, God, what would you have me to sow into this seed? And direct that seed where you want it to go. Everybody has given that has desired to give. Let me pray over your seed and touch and greet with where you are directing. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for every seed that has been sown. We thank you, Lord God, for our return on what we have given, Lord God. We thank you for our harvest that you will reap, that we will reap abundantly, just as your word says, Lord God, because we're not sitting by watching the clouds, Lord God, but we're putting action behind our giving. We're putting thought behind our giving. We're putting meaning behind our giving, Lord God, that we're putting the expectation and the demand on heaven, Lord God, that we shall reap, Lord God, if we faint not. So we thank you for every seed that has been sown. We ask that you bless those that desire to give and have not, Lord God, that on the next time, Lord God, that they'll have an abundance in their hands so that they can sow and give freely, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare in Jesus' name, amen and amen amen. So we have this new thing that we're doing today, and it's called the Declaration. And so what I want to read to you is the Declaration of Faith for Kingdom Well Church. And we're going to have this to be able to share with you the next time we meet again. So the scripture says in Job 22 and 28, Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall be shine upon thee in all thy ways. So I want to read this declaration over you, and I want you to receive it and agree with it so that it can be established. So bear with me. It's kind of lengthy, but I want to decree this over you because we want it to manifest. Amen? Amen. It says, we, the body of believers at Kingdom One Church, enforce God's original plans and purposes in our lives and in the life of this ministry. We are citizens of the kingdom of God and we have what we say we can have, what, it, what, what it, we say we can have. We are doers of the word of God and not just hearers only. We are what the word of God says we are. We have what the word of God says we can have and we can do what the word of God says that we can do. We hold fast to our confession of faith and we do not turn coward faint, lose heart, or give up. Yeah. We are God's chosen generation, yes. his royal priesthood, and yes. we are reigned as kings in the earth. We are healed we are of the healed. Lord. Jehovah Rapha has taken sickness and disease away from the midst of us. We have a sound mind and body. We are energized, revitalized, transformed, renewed, restored powerhouses for God. We curse at the root. Yeah. Every sickness, every disease, every pain, every virus and infirmity that would try to attack us and we plead the blood of Jesus over our bodies. We are redeemed from debt, poverty, and lack. Every single household of Kingdom One Church and every visitor is blessed and living under an open heaven. Yeah. The, pleasant, the blessing of the Lord makes us rich and adds no sorrow with it. We are increasing more and more in wealth and riches are in our house. We are the head and not the tail, above and never, ever, ever beneath. We are lenders and not borrowers. We are sowing bountifully and we are reaping a bountiful harvest on every single seed that has been sown. We have strong marriages and families that are knitted together in love and rooted in the word of God. Wives 
are submitting to their own husbands as unto the Lord, and the husbands love their wives as Christ loved the church. Amen. Our youth fear the Lord and obey and honor their parents. We bind every single demonic attack against our families yes. and we speak life, joy, love, solidarity, and peace over our households. Kingdom Well Church is prospering at everything it sets its hands yes. to. We have a great work to accomplish and we command finances and all resources to come forth now without delay. We call in everything prepared for us before the foundation of the world that pertains to our life and the life of this ministry. We declare that the wealth of the wicked, the treasures of darkness, and the hidden riches of secret places come unto us now. The supernatural word of God is prevailing in every area of our lives. We are fighting the good fight of faith and laying hold to eternal life. We are overcomers and our faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Amen. Now thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph always. in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. I declare that over amen. your people. Amen. 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 Next, thank God for his declaration. We'll next move into a time of liturgical dance by none other than Caleb Villa. And then after that, we will dive straight into to the word. Amen. Amen. Change today. We, we give you, we give you the issues. We give you all of this stuff, and we just pray, God, that you would fill us with something new, something fresh. Oh God, how we need something fresh in this season, something, something new, God. Fill us again today, God. Give us something fresh. Give us something new. Oh, fill us again. Fill us again. God, we're ready.
is the song that she was dancing and ministering to was talking about new wine. You know, the scripture tells us that you can't put new wine in the old wine skin. And so for just a moment, I don't know about you, but I need God to do something new in me, something fresh. And so for just a few moments, can you begin to just lift your hands all over the room? Come on, let God do something new in you. Let him give you new thoughts, new ideas, new strategy, a new heart. Maybe you are in the room today and God needs to mend a broken place inside of your heart. Let's not, I refuse to leave the same way that we come in. So God, do something new in the room. Amen. 
And so John 16 and 33 says this, I have told you these things so that you may have peace, that the world, in the world, you will have trouble. Look at somebody say, you're going to have some trouble. If you live in the world, you're going to have trouble. You're going to have times where things are going to be difficult. You're going to face some disappointments. You're going to face some losses. However, in Jesus, we always win, but we got to be honest about the times that we face disappointments. And so what are disappointments? Disappointments are loss of relationships, broken relationships, unmet expectations, Missed opportunities, unfulfilled promises, unfulfilled, unfulfilled careers, setbacks, where the reality just falls short of the expectation. And so we have all these expectations, but then we come into the reality that it didn't turn out the way that we thought it would. Oh, y'all ain't talking as good as I'm preaching. And so what it is is that I know you have been in a place in your life where you thought you were going to get that job. You thought that relationship was going to happen. You thought the promotion was going to happen, but it looked like a setback. Come on. Come on, Pastor. And so, yes, I have faith. And yes, I believe in God. But as a believer, Lord, I'm still disappointed in the fact that it didn't work out the way that I thought it would. Yes. And so, we have to be okay with being honest about how we feel. See, God is God gave us emotions. We just got to know how to manage them. And it doesn't mean you avoid them. It doesn't mean that you isolate and put them in the corner. But we got to be honest about how we feel. And if I can't be honest with God about how I feel, how in the world can I be honest with a man? I have to be honest with God that, hey, God, I thought that it was going to work out this way, but I just don't know why it feels like I'm still stuck and not moving toward my purpose or my destiny. God, it feels like I keep going around and around in the circles and God, I'm not getting to what I thought was on the vision board. What I put on the goal is God, it seems like I'm still here. And so, here is the thing where we're not honest with him about the disappointments it'll pervert your vision. Oh, y'all too quiet in here. It'll pervert what you have given him, God. This is the vision that I want for myself. But what happens is disappointment come in and pervert to contaminate the vision that you never see what you wrote on the board. And so I want you to ask somebody, Pastor Vivica, how does that happen? Look at somebody else. That person wasn't paying attention. Ask somebody else. How does that happen? I'm so glad you asked. You know, you always want to love, you always want to marriage, and I'm just going to talk from a lady's standpoint for just a moment. You know when you were a teenager and you put on your girlfriend's name, now who's going to be your bridesmaid in your wedding and the color of the wedding and how your boo going to look and all that laid out, but what happens is you experience a little heartbreak. And the heartbreak impacted you so much that you really didn't give it back to God. And so when the new relationship comes up, it's perverted because it looks, it don't look like the vision that you had when you was a little girl. Oh, I don't have the bigger wedding that I thought I was going to have. Oh, now I don't know how to move forward because it don't look the same way that I thought it. Teacher. Or you get married and you decide to stay in the marriage and some things had happened but you stayed. But what happens is you say you stay, but your actions don't look like you stay. You don't let him into the inner parts of your being and to the emotional intimacy that he can connect with you on that level of vulnerability because you're afraid of taking a risk again of being hurt. Oh, oh y'all quiet. And I'm not telling you something that I, somebody told me, but something that I lived. Okay. And so here, I remember after Will and I, you know, we've been together a long time. 20 years. Amen. Thanks, God. What is good look itself? But I remember when my heart got broken and he made a silly decision. And I said, hey, okay, God, you said this was my husband. I'm going to trust you. But I didn't give God the disappointment of the letdown that he did. I just said, I trusted God. 
So what happens is I get back into relationship with this man, but I don't trust him fully. And so I show up and I don't give him the intimate parts of me because I'm afraid of being hurt again. This is a disappointment that the Lord is saying, hey, it is perverting. Your unforgiveness is going to sneak in and Satan will get an advantage of me. Unforgiveness will breed inadequacy, comparison, rejection, Low self-esteem and you wondering how you operate in a way that God didn't even create you to be. God said that you the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. But here you are comparing your journey to somebody else. When I tell you comparison steals the joy and it steals what God has placed on the inside of you. And so you got to watch that not only do I have to forgive my brother and my sister, but I got to forgive myself too. Because... If we don't properly deal with this disappointment, we stay stuck. And we don't move. And we stay in the same place. And we're wondering, hey, why I look like the goals that I said in 2020 look like the same goals in 2024? Who? Huh? Why does it look the same? Because here is the thing. The Bible tells me, John 10 and 10, that, that the, the enemy comes to steal kill and destroy but I come that they you and me will have life and life more what abundantly so for life to be more abundantly I gotta be able to move I can't be stuck and so you gotta forgive yourself and allow don't allow the disappointments to derail your destiny so in this series we're talking about feelings and how we monitor them and how there's a guarding within us, our heart, that if we are not careful about what we plant, starting with the thought of what we think, that we'll pay attention that there'll be things in our garden that is dying, things in our garden that's not have any fruit because we're not putting the right seeds in. And so the Lord, I said, I said this earlier, emotions he gave to us, emotions aren't bad. And so we cannot isolate and avoid them. We just got to know how to manage them. Look at somebody say, manage them. And so we can't be so holy that we're not being honest about what we feel. This is what I do. So me, me, I, I call God daddy because he's like a father to me. And so I've had some disappointments in life. And I was like, well, hey, no, wait, 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 dad. Now wait, hold on. Um, how this happen? And God, I, I really, that broke my heart. Like, I really thought, I really thought they were my friends. I, Lord, you told me that you opened this door for me. Why well, it didn't work out the way that I thought it would? God, you brought me into this new place. Why is it not turning out the way that I thought it would? And so here is the thing. If the enemy can take disappointment, and allow you to plant that seed in your garden. Do you know what happens? It takes away faith. Because if the opposite of disappointment is faith. Let me, let me read the definition to you about disappointment. Disappointment is. Bear with me, y'all. Just writing so little on here. I mean. <laughs> Disappointment is a lack of fulfillment in one's hopes and expectations. So if I take that, a lack of fulfillment in my hope and expectation. And what is faith is the evidence of things, what hope for. So if the enemy can get me with disappointment, then he comes and he steal my faith. And the Bible tells me that it is impossible to please him without what? Faith. Okay. And so this is so serious that we got to be adamant about, wait, 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 hold on, that feels like disappointment. I got to put this on the altar. Wait, wait. This feels like disappointment. God, I gotta have a conversation and give this back to you because I can't allow.
allow disappointment to steal my faith. Amen. So let's go here in the word. Go to Luke chapter 5. And we're going to read verses 17 through 25. Luke chapter 5. I think I'm reading in the New Living Translation. And so here is the thing. Hope is the expectation that God will keep his word. That God will keep his word to me. But the reality of it is sometimes our stories don't look like that. I thought I would be married by now. I thought the career would have been taken off by now. I thought I would have known my purpose by now. And so, but here is the thing. The Lord wants you to give him the disappointment so he can exchange it with faith. And so it's like, well, God, I've been here real long, and it feels like I'm stuck here, but the Lord said, but I've got something for you. Give me the disappointment so I can give you the faith. And with the faith, I'll give you the direction and the strategy and the wisdom to prepare for you the vision that I have for you. And we got to be honest. Sometimes this is not about the enemy, and this ain't about God. Sometimes the disappointment is about you. Because you made the decision. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh, oh. You know your friend told you that was not the guy for you, but you went right on ahead and talked to him anyway. You know you had the signs about that job. You knew that wasn't the best position to go for, but you went on anyway. And so we got to be honest and keep it 100. Hey, that was on me, God. That was on me. Let's read the Bible. Let's go to Luke 5, 17 to 25. And it says in verse 17, what? On one of the days while Jesus was teaching, some proud religious law keepers and teachers of the law were sitting by him. And they had came from every town in the countries of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. The power of the Lord was there to what did them do what? Heal them. And verse 18 says, and some men took a man who was not able to move his body to Jesus, and he was carried on a bed. They looked for a way to take the man into the house where Jesus was, but they could not find a way to take him in because of so many people. So here Jesus is preaching, and men from all over the countries in Galilee have come, but there is this man who's with his friends who have brought him to see Jesus. And so they get there and there is a crowd. They can't get to Jesus. Now see, let me tell you, let me first say this on side, sidebar. If you want some friends, I want friends like this. Amen. That no matter what they see and what the obstacles are, baby, we're going to find a way to get you to Jesus. I don't care what it looks like and how we got to do it, but I'm going to get you right to where he is. Amen. And so here is the thing. I want to show you in the scripture the door that he thought that they wanted to take him in is the first disappointment. Because the reality is he couldn't fit the door to them people. And the next disappointment is time. They got there too late that it was so filled that they couldn't get to Jesus. But Revelation 4 and 1 tells me this. As I look I see a door standing in an open heaven. See, a ceiling can become a door if you just see past what the limitations are. Sometimes you got to make your own door. I don't care if the door is closed. I don't know if I need to take the hinges off. If there's a window that I need to make the door, pull the, the roof off, pull the sheets off. I need to get down because I need to see Jesus. Amen. And so here he was and looking for God, trying to get through the door. But here is the thing. There are some times that if it don't work out the way you plan, you got to still posture yourself in the position to receive your miracle from God. Ooh. See, I don't care if I need a healing from the Lord. I don't care how many people are in the room, how many people I got to push through. I'm going to be like the woman with the issue of blood. If I got to crawl my way down to get to Jesus, yeah. I'm going to get there because I'm expecting a miracle. Yeah. But here, if it would have worked out the way you planned it, what if they gave, what if he gave you what you wanted them to give you? You wouldn't be in a position that allow you to receive 
only what Jesus has for you. Because here's the thing, what if they had got there early and he made it into the corner of the room? What if he had got through the door and they find a way to slide him on in there because he couldn't walk, but he ended up in the corner? He still don't get in front of Jesus. It wasn't until they came through the roof and he led him right in the middle of where Jesus was. Sometimes you may want it to work out one way, but the Lord has said, I need you to let it work out through the obstacles and through the chaos because I'm going to put you right in the posture and in the place for the miracle. And so God is trying to give you the whole table, but you've been trying to get a seat at the table. Oh, I don't want just a seat at the table. No, 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 no. I want him to prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. No matter what it looks like, I got to get it all. See, you can't allow the disappointment to steal your faith. Because if I do that, it's going to derail the destiny. So if that man and his friends had stayed stuck and did not allow themselves to be creative and think outside of the box, he never would have got before Jesus. He would have stayed crippled and not healed. So what is in your life that you haven't found your way in the right posture to give to Jesus that still looks very crippled and not healed? I gotta allow God to heal every part of it, but you gotta be at the right posture. Amen. Amen. And so verse 20 says this. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, friend, your sins are forgiven. I found this very interesting. It says Jesus saw their faith. Mark writes faith in this verse as a noun. It's not a state of being or a confession, but faith is actually what you allow yourself to see. Jesus saw their faith. Jesus saw their tenacity and their willingness to break outside of the box of like, hey, 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 if I got to step over the box, I'm going to step over the box. So God, I don't care if I got to get up here to get up to where you are. I'm going to do whatever I need to do to get to what I need from you. And so it tells me that if not just faith is about just hearing, but you can also see faith. How you living and what actions you take can be faithfulness too. And so I want to ask you, what is your life looking like? Does it look like a faith-filled life? Oh. 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 Come on, Pastor. Oh. Or is it looking like you operating in your own self? Does life look like faith? Or are you operating even in risk? Is it faith? Because here is the thing. The Lord said, I see their willingness I see their tenacity. I see that they're not allowed. Obstacles, people are a shut door to stop them from getting to me. And so I said, God, then there had to be something about that, that heart, that, that they had to, to um, pinch your heart for you to feel something. Because he said, it was like he, he loved what he saw. It was unusual. It was out of the box. And so I want to admonish you that sometimes you got to do some stuff that's out of the box. It may not seem popular. It may seem crazy. That's the part where you're in service and you're not worried about what people think about you, but I'm going to worship you and scream out of my mouth how good you are and the goodness of you because I want my faith to be seen. And so here he says in the verse, Jesus saw their faith and he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. And so wait, hold up, y'all. Let's go back to the parable. The friends brought him to get healed. He didn't come to get saved. He came to get healed. So I'm just imagining his friends were like, now, Jesus, uh, we had to carry him all the way down here. So are you going to give him this healing with his legs or are we going to have to carry him back? Because uh, the plan is for him to walk out of here. This is not, 
You know, we, we thank God his sins is forgiven, but Lord, how are we going to get him back? <laughs> and so I'm sitting in the bed and I'm tickled when he gave me this revelation. But what do you do when God gives you what you didn't ask for? You want him to fix your situation, but he's trying to fix what's in you. He want to work on you, not fix the problem, because I need to fix you first. So before I can give you the healing, let me save you first, so that you know that you have the authority now to decree and declare healing, and you already are healed, because now you got the power of me living on the inside of you. There is something deeper that needs to be done outside of you versus of the problem that you see right here. It's something deeper. It's something deeper. Yeah, he can't walk. I need to be healed. Come on, God, heal me. He's like, yeah, that's real cute, but I need to save you first. Amen. I can't just give you what you want, but I got to give you what you need first. I think about Caleb. And God gave this for you, Caleb, when I was studying. You came to Baton Rouge to play ball. You came to Baton Rouge to get your graduate degree, but the Lord knew there was something deeper that you needed. And so he said, I can't leave you in a place of emptiness and loss. I got to give you family because that's what you need. And so I want to say to you today, stop asking God to fix something for you, but you got to ask if God do it within me first. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Go down to verse 23. And I'm finishing up. Verse 23 says, so that you may know the Son of God, the Son of Man, has the right and the power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who could not move his body, I say to you, get up, take your bed, and go home. And at once, is that right? Suddenly, uh -huh, the sick man got up in front of them, and he took his bed, and he went to his home thanking God. So homies didn't have to take him back on their back no more. They didn't have to carry him. The Lord heals him. And so the man faced with the disappointment of not being able to walk. Not being able to get through the door. Making to the opportunity late. But here he was wanting a healing. But what he meant was salvation. And he took the exchange of the disappointment of not being able to be crippled and God gave him faith by giving him him. And so on today, can we be honest and make the bold confession that hey, 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 I can't let disappointment derail my destiny. Look at somebody and tell them that disappointment can derail my destiny. It can't. You can come, Chris. And so I want us to be like this man. And isn't it interesting? He doesn't even have a name. He's just a man who got some real good friends. His squad that comes and put him down in the roof of the, build, of the building and put him right where Jesus is. For what they was thinking for him to be healed, but he ends up getting saved and healed. This is just how wonderful that God is. We can ask him for one thing, but here he is actually giving us more than what we even ask for. Exceedingly, abundantly, above what I can ever ask or think. What are you asking him for? Are you asking him with that same goal and vision that's been sitting on your vision board for the last four years? Are you believing him for him to do something? Are you believing him to do something within you? A relational thing. A connection thing. Because that's what he really wants. He wants to be in relationship with you. As I was studying this, I said, Lord, why you have us here? He says, everybody that's supposed to be in the room will be there. So I know that there's folks in the room that had to face some disappointment today. And on today, I want you to give them back to Jesus. I hey God, that thing didn't work out for me. And it's a disappointment. 
But I trust you, Father, that I'm going to allow you to take it. But before there's ever a change in behavior, there has to be awareness first. So you got to be aware that it's there. And so I want to pray for you. We're going to do a corporate prayer. That if you've had to deal with disappointment, and if that got to be everybody in the room, because I didn't deal with disappointment, Pastor Will didn't deal with disappointment, okay? That's all us in the room. That we give it back to God this time. We don't lay it and put it in the corner. We don't give it to a friend. We don't give it to our partner. But God, I give it back to you. Amen. So that you can do something with it. Stand over the door. Today has to be a decision that you make. That God, I'm tired of being stuck. I'm tired of being disappointed. God, I thought it would be different, but on today, I'm done with it. And so here is what I want you to do. You got to make a declaration first, and then I'm going to stand in agreement with you in prayer. But if today you're done with it, I want you to declare I'm done with it. I'm done with it. And so we're going to believe God that as you are done with it, that he's going to do something fresh. Lift your hands all over the room. Father God, in the name of Jesus, you heard that declaration on today that they're done with it. They're done with every disappointment. They're done with every letdown, Father. And today they give it back to you. God, we thank you now and today, God, that you give them the spirit of faith. You give them confidence and boldness in you, God, that they will allow themselves to trust again. But God, that they will trust you, Father, and they will trust the people that you put in their life, God. They will trust you with the directions of their life. They will trust you, God, with everything that you have given them to steward and to oversee. God, I thank you now in the name of Jesus that disappointments will not left be over our homes anymore. That disappointment will no longer be over our relationships. Disappointment would no longer be over our marriages. Disappointment would never be over our children. Where you thought the child would be this, but they end up being something else. But God, I thank you, Lord, that on today we trust you, God, that you do everything according to your will and your purpose for your life and all things work together for our good. So God, we thank you, Lord, for it working together for our good. And on today we lay down disappointment. On today we put it at the feet of Jesus and we bring it to the altar, God, and we don't pick it back up. God, we give it to you. And we give you the glory and we give you the praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Give God a hand clap of praise in the room. Did the Lord bless you on today? Amen.
and cover you in prayer and whatever you need until God directs you. And we already thank you Amen. for your building, your support that you put into this ministry. Amen. 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 Family, can we come those that are part of Kingdom Love come and give her a hug? Yes, and let the family come love her. <laughs> Let's go home. Lift your hands. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for this time of fellowship with you. We thank you, Lord God, for your presence, that you allow your presence to come and meet us every time that we're in this space together. God, I ask that you will go with each and every person and family that's represented here on today. God, I ask that you will protect them, you will lead them, you will guide them, Father. I thank you, God, that no harm or danger will come near or not their dwelling place. God, I thank you that the favor of the Lord will chase after them, Father. I thank you, Lord God, that they will that, that they will have riches, Father God, and wealth that will be for them to have access to God. I thank you, Lord God, that they will lay down every disappointment and they will walk in faith, God, with you and believe in you, God, for all things that you have called them to and purpose for in their life. We give you glory and we give you praise. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.